About 400 miles off the east coast of Africa lies a group of colorful islands, the most important of which are Madagascar, the third largest island in the world, and Seychelles, upon which the original Garden of Eden is said to have been located. Madagascar is a French colony with a population of about three and a half million people, and its chief port of call is Diego Suarez, in the beautiful harbor of which our good ship has just dropped anchor for a brief visit. Since 1896, Madagascar has been under the control of France, and among the prominent Frenchmen who have contributed to its history was Joffre, the great marshal of World War fame, who founded a naval station and military base here about 40 years ago. The Malagasy, or native people of Madagascar, were formerly ruled by their own kings under a tribal and primitive form of government, which apparently has not been entirely suppressed by the French. As a matter of fact, as recent as 1916, a fiendish plot to poison the entire French population was discovered, and as a result, hundreds of Malagasy were rigorously punished. Incidentally, that popular vehicle, the rickshaw, which seems to confine itself to the more remote parts of the world, is said to have been invented by a Connecticut missionary in China. And it is also said that a large percentage of the rickshaws used in the distant corners of the world are manufactured in Newark, New Jersey. For almost a hundred years prior to the French regime, the Malagasy were ruled by female sovereigns. And as a result, the position of women is much higher here than is usually so in primitive countries. Madagascar's exports are far in excess of its imports, and most of its trade is with France and the French colonies, although no small amount of the capital invested in Madagascar's industries is British. Among the chief exports are rice, salt, tapioca, and coffee, and the bulk of these products pass through the port of Diego Suarez for shipment to France and the French colonies. Leaving Madagascar in the heat of an unrelenting sun, we begin our 600-mile journey northward to the Seychelles Islands. And while en route, we enjoy perfect relaxation on board ship, where the diversions of modern cruising provide an interesting contrast with the hardships that must have been experienced by the courageous old mariners who chartered our route centuries ago. After two days of delightful sailing through the Indian Ocean, we arrive at Mahe, or Port Victoria, the principal island of the Seychelles Group. Tradition associates Seychelles with the original Garden of Eden, but the recorded facts of history indicate that it was not visited by man until 1609. In that year, the crew of an English vessel seeking native trade explored the islands, but finding them entirely uninhabited, considered their visit in vain and sailed away. More than a century passed, and the peaceful little islands of Seychelles continue to exist, free of human life. The advent of man as a colonizer did not begin until about the middle of the 18th century, when Seychelles was formally annexed to France. It was first colonized by French Creoles and African Negroes, and later by East Indians and a few British. As a result of this, the population of Seychelles today is a very colorful mixture. Over a century ago, the islands of Seychelles were ceded to Great Britain, and Port Victoria is now a coaling station for the British Navy. But French influence still dominates the manners and customs of the people. The language in general use is a rude Creole patois, based on the French with a large admixture of Indian, Bantu, and English words. The pure white population is less than a thousand. About two-thirds of the inhabitants are Roman Catholics. Fishing and agriculture constitute the most important occupations, 
but there is a primitive industry now in vogue that is becoming very popular, and it is called the sugar rum business, in which the juice from sugar cane is extracted by this ingenious method and is distilled as a potent liquor. Among the innumerable plants and trees that constitute Seychelles' picturesque foliage is a particular species of coconut tree, which produces a double coconut known as the coco de mer, and it is found in no other part of the world. The spiders of Seychelles are unusually colorful, and some of them are over a foot in length. In spite of their cleverness in the construction of webs, spiders appear to have practically no intelligence. All their actions are instinctive. Even the construction of the beautiful wheel web is quite automatic, the severing of one strand of the spiral producing a corresponding deformity in the next. Nowhere in the world is there more beautiful scenery than that which may be seen along the shoreline of the Seychelles Islands where a tropical sea provides a primitive people with the necessities of life. The natural beauty of the Seychelles Islands inspired the British General Gordon to refer to them as the Garden of Eden. And we are inclined to do likewise, for we know of no place on this earth that is more in keeping with what we would expect of that proverbial utopia. And it is here that we say farewell to the Garden of Eden.